Lord, you know me, and you always will. Yeah, you keep me, you hold me close. Like new mercies in the morning, still you surround me. Every day, oh, I need you, Lord, and I will never change. In every moment, in every way, oh, I need you, Lord, and I will never change. No, oh, I will never change. Welcome to church. Hello up there, y'all. And and Jim. Good evening. Uh, announcements are running on the board. You can see what's coming up. Champaign County Fair is probably the next big thing, right? So how about praise reports? Are there praise reports tonight? We should have a praise report among among us. Mr. Zirkle? Four or five years I've been carrying a five millimeter kidney stone around. Oh, wow. The doctor had x rays and all the time done. Guess what? 
no more stone. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. Praise the Lord. I bet, I bet you were uh, not looking forward to the day you had to deal with that. Five millimeters. Praise the Lord. That's great. It's a praise report. Praise report. Show a praise report. You go praise God for something. What? Praise reports. Praise reports. Job duty. Um. First of all, Chuck and I will be driving at the fair from three to seven. That's falls under the announcement Hold on. version. Seven to close passed. every night. So if you need a ride out to your car, just give us a call. That's more like a prayer request. <laughs> Tuesday is um. Senior Citizens Day, and we're working in the morning. There you go, John. Okay. So, <laughs> Tuesday is Senior So, Citizen. and Chuck and I are going to, we are uh, moving to um, a new spot in the campground. So, we're moving on up to lot 501, <laughs> which is just a little bigger than the lot we have now. So, there you go. Yeah. A little bit of time. So, right. one baby step. Right on. Right on. And they'll be driving and catch that. Pat will be driving the golf carts around the fair. You need a ride. Yep. Go ahead. Up. Who said it? I can't remember who said something. Too. Did we get it? I'm so confused. I hear you're doing bad, y'all. Go ahead, praise your force. Hold on. Are you listening with her? The shock collar. The shock collar will be there waiting on her. The shock collar. The shock collar. Hey, I'm not going to make any mistakes. I'm not getting in trouble this year. I've already determined. I'm going to be good and not hit anybody or anything. Even when I back up. It's gonna be okay. Lesson James. Stubby stones. Justin will be out there. It's Justin, right? We'll have the food stand out there. Stubby stones at the fair. So, right off. You want to help work? If there's if there's there, there volunteers needed, right? Or or yep. So, if you want to volunteer, get with Justin. For the fair tent. Uh, I think that should be out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, stop it. Okay, good. All right. Go ahead. Whatever you got. Prayer requests, praise report. Go ahead. Mrs. Zirkle. Uh, my sister in law, Marcella, had, had to have her shoulder replaced yesterday, but she did. She got through the surgery just fine. She's home now. And also, uh, Linda Craigler called me today. She's really sick with COVID. She, she came down with it Saturday, so she's real sick. She wants the church to pray for her. Yeah. Okay, Linda. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. Right on. Okay. Shine. I know I can hear you. <laughs> Thanks, Don. Um, so Mom has made the absolute decision to move back to Michigan. Oh gosh. So that's a thing. Um, she's also insanely sick right now. She has been sick since she's moved here, and I believe there's a lot going on spiritually with my mom. I, there's been a lot of attack in our family, um, and with this decision to move back, I've pretty much lost my brothers and my sister over this. Um, it's a lot of spiritual warfare going on, but just lift my mom up. Um, she is so fragile right now, and if for her to move is just, I want her to be happy. So whatever the Lord's will is, just pray the Lord's will over her. Yep. Well, gotcha. Yep. Sure will. We'll lift her up. That's good. Yeah, they... um, speaking of spiritual warfare, like it's intense right now. Just, I thought I had a new job this week and I it fell through. So just eyes and lows. Pray for spiritual warfare. Right up, right up. Okay, sis. Gotcha. Okay, Rob. Well, Lori threw her back out a couple days ago and it's just oh. kind of miserable. So if you could just, it, it's getting. Slightly incrementally better each day, praise the Lord, but just she gets impatient. So if you could just pray for patience for yeah. her and for healing for her, I'd appreciate it. Carrying you, right? Listen, for 30 years, man, that's, that's yeah. a lot of work. That's, that's a lot of work. 
Uh, I know that Charity and Kayla were up there, but Charity had a thing with her wheelchair lift and her van catching fire yesterday, and uh, she's just feeling really down. Yeah. And just yeah, we'll everything she's got going on, she's just feeling really down in the dumps. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Hey, it's yeah. Dan Williams is a the old Marine guy walks in here in a walker in the second oh, yeah. service. Yeah, yeah. He had open heart surgery. And had some infection afterwards. Oh. He's okay. Got a new cow valve. <coughs> what he wants to say. <laughs> Sam. Stan. 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 Anyhow, he's bypassed and a couple other things they worked on in his heart. He's he's doing okay. He just needs prayer. He he wants to go to rehabilitation, but he they won't release him because of this infection. Huh. Isn't super serious, but Stan the man. Okay. Back here. Back here, John. <laughs> Sorry. Sure. My son, Billy, has been having migraines since May 28th. They do not know what is going on. And now he's in a battle with the hospitals and the insurance companies. The insurance company doesn't want to pay for stuff because he's just in the hospital. And he's just miserable. And he's got those four little ones at home. His wife's trying to, I mean, one's just born in June. So, like, really little ones. And they're just having a really hard time. Yep. And I want to lift them up. And pray. Absolutely. Yep. Chris? I added uh, Joe Tanner to the prayer list. A friend from, I used to work with, but he's got a really fast moving brain cancer they just found, and it can't operate, so he just needs a lot of prayer. Yeah. Okay. Yep. My cousin Bruce, which I go visit him every week and I talk about him, he's bed fast, he's got a type of Parkinson's. And he has these attacks where he thrusts literally out of the bed and thrashes all through the room. He's done this for years. And the Carrie's getting, I just want prayer for him because they don't change him. It's just so, so sad. And he loves Jesus. He's got a horrible life. And I'd like us to pray for God in that situation. And my nephew has ALS, is having trouble breathing some. He's living with my brother and sister. So prayer for those two guys. Yep. What's the second guy's name, Bruce? Nathan, Nathan and Bruce. Nathan. Nathan's with the ALS? Yeah. Nathan has ALS. Yep. Okay. So, you know, uh, Rob right there lost his mom. Rob Blosser right there lost his mom. Just buried her. Thank you for the prayers. I see our name up there. So, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. Kathy Williams passed away. Oh. Uh, funeral Friday. All right, let's go to the Lord. Lord God, we first come before you with praise. Yep. We glorify you, Lord Jesus. You have us, Lord God. You give us life. We know that uh, if we believe in you, we'll live even if we die. We praise you for that, Lord God. We praise you that Mr. Zirkel doesn't have to deal with that kidney stone. We praise you for that. He didn't need that. He don't have time for that. We praise you for taking care of him. We praise you that uh, Marcella's surgery went well. Let her recover. Um, lift up Linda. Let her get over that thing. Just knock that COVID out, Lord God. Get it out of our community. Keep it out of our family here at church. Um, keep us healthy, Lord God. We just want to lift up Stan. Let him recover. Keep him healthy and let him recover, Lord God. Don't let any after surgery things creep in there. Keep him healthy and um, get him back on his feet. We think of our sister Lori. Let her strengthen her. Strengthen her back, Lord God. Let her get to move it again. Be with Brenda. Lord, give her peace. Give her her health, Lord God be with the whole family, be with Shine's whole family, let them have uh, understanding, patience, wisdom, let them, let them, give them words, let them know what the right move is for Brenda, give her back her health, let her feel good, let her reach out to you, bring her here with us, let her have a family here, Lord God. Unite, unite that whole family. Unite them, Lord God. We thank you for that.
think about the, uh, I forgot the names already, with uh, ALS and uh, the other brother, Lord God, give them peace, give them peace in their situation, Lord God, comfort them, improve their situation, work in them, work in their lives, Lord God, be with the, be with the patents. Lord, I pray that you bless them. You want to speak a blessing over the patents, Lord God. Give them, give them work. Let them be faithful to you. Be faithful back to them, Lord God. Give them work. Give them work. Give them a space. Give them peace. Give them comfort. Let them be strong together as a united family. Bless the patents. Take it easy on them, Lord God. Bless him. Bless him. Lift him up, Lord God. Pray for Carl's son. In, in, in your name, Lord Jesus, healing. Let him know it comes from you, Lord God. Let Carl lay hands and pray over him, Lord God. Give him faith to reach out to you. Lord God, we lift up so many requests here. We all need you. We all need to turn our face to you, Lord God. We know that. Don't let us get caught up in the looking to the side and <laughs> whatever chaos and whatever wickedness or whatever evil. Let us always look to you. Let our eyes and our focus be on you. Let our peace and security not be in anything else, even our own spouses, Lord God, but to you. Let our peace be in you. Let our wife always reminds me. You've given us your peace. Let us walk in it, Lord God. We love you. We praise your name. We bring your worship. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's bring him our worship. And that's up to you and me how we do that. We just want to get heart, God's heart tonight. Let's go for it.
blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of He gave us His one and only Son to save. For God so loved the world that He gave us His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. is waiting God so loved the world oh I love that thought that he loves me enough that I can bring my failures I can bring those addictions and those flaws and those things and we all have something I don't care who you are if you don't think you do well you got a problem because we all have something we all do because we're human and I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus. I'm thankful for the love of Christ that he took on human form and that he died on a cross for me and for you. Praise his name. Let's lift him up. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, Praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you've got to stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you've got to shout it from the mountain, louder in the valley, trusting that he's going to get you there. Sometimes you've got to welcome the wonder, wait for the answer, worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest he is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of our praise. Sometimes you gotta praise in the prison, cry out to heaven, shout it till the door swing wide. Sometimes you gotta stand on your shackles, brave in the battle, worship with your head till high. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. He is worthy, yes, He is worthy of all of our praise. Give Him praise, give Him praise in the highest praise. Give Him praise, give Him praise in the highest He is worthy, yes, He is worthy of all of our praise. Faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath, I'll praise you anywhere. Faithful all my life, blessings day and night, countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept. Goodness, every step, each and every breath, 
I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Oh, valley, I know that you're with me there. I'll praise you anyway. Lord, we can trust in you. We follow you. Lord, we look to you, God. When we find ourselves, Lord, in a cave in this life, just scared, Lord, we call out to you. And we trust in you. We remind ourselves of what your word says. guide our paths, Lord, that we lean not onto our own understanding, but Lord, that we seek you and we follow your path of righteousness, God. Lord, that's what we need, Lord, is to just find you, hold on to you, and follow you. Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, 
and he heard and he answered that's why i trust him that's why i trust in god my savior the one who will never fail he will never fail i trust in god my savior the one who will never He does not leave me. He does not leave you. He's faithful. Even in my worst times, He still is faithful because that's who He is. Lord, you are always, Lord, always faithful in all that you do. And we can trust that and we can hold on to that. And we can walk in this life, Lord, when our enemies are after us, when we don't know what tomorrow holds, Lord, we can trust in your faithfulness. And I am so grateful. Lord, thank you for this night. Thank you for the love you give us. Bless the word of God. Lord, you've been just speaking and speaking. And I pray you pour out Holy Spirit tonight. In Jesus' name. Why I trust him. Hello, hello. Hello, everybody. You okay? Have you guys all heard? I think it's public now. Old Tina over there. You guys heard? Yeah, the the old Tina over there. She she got this big old rock not that long ago, and then they've announced the date. Have you heard the date? Have you heard that? 
like in two weeks. Like in two weeks. Getting married like in two weeks. Hot. What? You don't get married to be happy. Uh, you get married to have somebody to blame, right? Yeah, yeah. Ah, I started off with a bang right there, didn't I? I started off with a bang. I sought the Lord and had a big crash. Good to see everybody. Um, Dodie, you missed that song. Oh, you were? That's a great song for you. Yeah? You should be, we're not that desperate yet. We're not, not that desperate. Yeah? You've tried out and still didn't make it, huh? Carl, turn me out of these monitors some, would you? Uh, I, I'd like to sing some tonight. And I don't hear myself. <laughs> Anyhow. Glad you're here. Father, thanks for time together. It's good, it's good, good, good to be together. Thanks for the crowd to come out tonight. Lord, just be right here with us. You can use me, Lord, that you have before. I've also been a stubborn donkey, Lord, that, that missed you. I pray for the, the first, not the last tonight, God, that you would just make me useful to you. Pray, God, for your word to come powerfully. Lord, that we, we've gathered tonight, Lord, to hear what you got to say. So, Lord, speak to us. Don't be silent. Don't be quiet, Lord. We need you. Lord, I, I don't want to go through the motions. Some of this stuff, Lord, is familiar to me. I can teach it. I can preach it. But I, I want more than that. I just want more than that. I want your presence, God. I want, I want your power. I want, I want, God, words from your heart that, that, that makes a difference. So, God, do what you do. Come be present. Lord, we invite you in. We don't want you outside. Lord, we need you here. We need your presence here. Lord, I've been inspired by things I've watched today about how wonderful you are. Come and be wonderful in this place. Come and do great things, Lord, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. You guys paying attention to that whole Middle Eastern thing? You know, I'm this guy that uh, gets motivated by uh, any thought that thinks that it indicates the Lord might be coming soon. So uh, that Middle Eastern thing, if that breaks out into war, uh, we need a war to get to a peace treaty. We need a peace treaty to get us home. So uh, we'll just see what happens here. We're watching pretty close. Don't know. Don't know it's five minutes, five months, five years. Don't have any idea what all that is. Not trying to predict any of that, but. I do know the Middle East is going to blow up at some point, and uh, for us Christians, it's a sign that we're getting close to the end, okay? So we're glad about that. I'm in Mark chapter 10 tonight. Uh, last week we spent time talking about divorce, how much I wanted to skip that subject. Mark talks a lot of teaching, Mark, first part of Mark chapter 10, teaching on divorce. There's a chapter in Matthew teaching on divorce, and then, of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, some teaching about divorce. Uh, and I'm glad to be out of there. We jump down here, thank goodness, we jump down here into some stuff. It's still, you know, Jesus, they say here, and if we read all the way back to the first verse, Jesus is at Jericho, and he's making his last trip to Jerusalem. That's where we're at, Mark, Mark moves really quickly, you know, and and uh, it isn't very long till they arrest him, and we're in the Garden of Gethsemane here pretty, pretty quickly in Mark. But um, if you want to, you ought to, you ought to do this. Let me just, you internet people, you can literally go to the internet and, and walk or virtually walk from Jericho to Jerusalem. And that's the, that's the journey that they're on here in Mark chapter 10. Okay? It's primarily uphill the the road is very super rugged i could not believe it modern day walk from jericho to jerusalem just how to go to the internet there's a three minute or seven minute video there about just that path there are people that literally go walk mark chapter 10 and uh it's it's more uh, remote uh rough 
scary rough, uphill, then you can believe. You can't believe it. You would think modern day Israel, you know, it'd be, it's, it's not. It's, so you ought to just go there to see, hey, what was Jesus walking? You know, that final walk up, uphill to Jerusalem was tough from the sea, from the, uh, the, from the Jordan River area there. Uphill is really, whew, it's interesting to look at that. So just in, if you get a minute, just say, you know, the path from Jericho to Jerusalem and look at that real quick. So here we are in Mark chapter 10, uh, and he was going out on the road. So there, there's even a theory there about they're just now leaving Jericho. There's really two Jerichos, or, or let me say this, there's a, there's a Jericho where people live, and then there's kind of like downtown, and there's a separation there. And, and they think they, that they were in between here when this rich man approaches Jesus and begins to talk to him about what must I do to inherit eternal life. Now, you guys know that we're church people, you know, and we kind of understand it isn't about works, it isn't about, you know, Jesus is trying to teach them. It, it's much more powerful in the day because they're trying to bring them out of the law. They're trying to bring them out of the, the junk. And the Lord, I was talking to a man today that said he's so stuck in the legalism of what he grew up in that he feels like he can't do enough to earn God's favor. And I'm like, are you kidding me? In this day and age, and you come to this church, and it's not about any of that. What are you doing? He said, I was just raised in that, and I, that early programming, sometimes you're better off, you know, instead of having bad teaching first, you know what I mean? Just have no teaching, and then get good teaching. But, but it's, it's harder to break off some of that bad teaching sometimes. In any event, he was going down the road, and one came running and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? How would you answer that? How would you answer that? Write a big check to the church? Uh, be a philanthropist. Do good everywhere. You know, go to the Catholic Church and say, whoa, whoa, Hail Mary, right? Well, good teacher. So this man walks up and says, he realizes Jesus is significant in some way. He doesn't really, he doesn't see him as a savior. He sees him as this teacher, rabbi, like a rabbi, right? What may I do, what must I do in inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. That is God. I think in the day you would understand more that they had this understanding that man isn't good. When you say good, you're talking about the only one that is good, God, right? So he's trying to say that here. In our day, we kind of lose track of some of that. But you're, you're why did you call me good? We only say good when it's related to God. So there's some thought that he's a good teacher, and there's some thought here that he's more. You know the commandments, don't, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, don't bear false witness, do not defraud, honor your father and mother. And he answered and said to him, teacher, all these things I have kept from my youth. You know, there's six there. He, he does. You know what he leaves out with Jesus leaving out? Put no other gods before me. Don't worship any graven image or worship you know any other god and he let, did that on purpose because this man has an issue with what his god is right so he lame, names the ones that he feels like the man can easily say well i do that and of course he says and he answered and said to him teacher all these things i've done for my youth i've, I've done all that i've been a good boy Jesus looked at him. That next thing. I was in the jail last night. Not the jail in Peru. <laughs> the local county jail. Had six men, not a big crowd last night. And somehow the Lord just came in that place. And we just talked about how much God loves. Here's this man. 
He's got all kinds of wrong priorities. He wants to do good. He wants eternal life. He cares about... There's a root of selfishness in it, which you see a lot in men. And Jesus, looking at him, loved him. I don't know where you're at. I don't know what you're thinking. I don't know that man that was in my office today. What are you thinking? God looks at you with love. The Lord's trying his best. And, and again, we miss some of the Jewish understanding of this. But he's trying his best to get him to understand you just got the wrong thinking, man. You just got, you just got some things twisted here. You got... You think doing good, being the best you can be. In the day, there was some teaching. I was just kind of studying some, and the, some said there was a day that wealthy people, this rich young ruler, wealthy people, um, a lot of people felt like they had favor with God already. So he must have felt like he had favor with God already, and I've done all these things right. And, and I think he was looking for Jesus to say, you're good. I, I just get moved by someone. I look at these. You see them little commas up there? Sometimes I just, I just read the phrase between the commas. And somehow, I don't know, somehow, sometimes I just read those phrases and say, that applies to me too. That applies to you too. It said to him, one thing you lack. And I'm sure that man, hey, would, would do anything. If the Lord would have told him, Go dip in the Jordan seven times, he'd have done it right. You know, any, anything, you know, wh whatever that might be. But the Lord Jesus knew exactly where his heart was and what his struggle was in. And, and I can only say the same thing is true for every one of us. Right? Lord Jesus is coming after those things. Hey, to break that yuck out of our life. He's trying to put truth in our life in, in place of wrong thinking. Does that make sense? He's trying to awaken us to the things we believe that haven't been right. And I know lots of people that have believed some kind of lie that's been said about them. Something their dad said, something a teacher said, something... I, I, there's many, many stories I've heard it over my career doing this thing where... where they, people remember this thing that was spoken over them that was just an absolute something the enemy wanted to stick on them. And they can't shake it. They can't seem to get past it. It, it kind of defines them, you know. And, and uh, one thing I had to learn, Not only does the Lord love me, the Lord wants to use me. He's saying yes to me. I ought to be saying yes to him. Right? And that's been a struggle because in my life, we were never wealthy. We were never important. We were never anybody. You have to break through all that stuff where God can use you, you know. You got to break through that thing and say, hey, Lord, just got, you got to get to the place where, Lord, here I am, use me. I don't care what that is. We were poor enough that when, we, my, when my family started serving in church, we just started serving, we just started cleaning the church. I've told you the story. My first job in the church was to mow the grass of the church with an electric lawnmower and not run over the cord. Pull the weeds and the flower beds out front. Just whatever it was. You know, we were the ones, we were the ones who had to scoot underneath the church pews and pull the gum off the bottom of the seats. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Some of it still had flavor. My point is, God's coming after something in you because he wants to make, you know, we, in Hebrews, we just read it, God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's coming at us, man. I mean, he, he's not stopping. 
in the work that he's trying to perfect in you. Does that make sense? He's, he, here he comes. And a lot of times we, uh, I was really hard on the church Sunday talking about, and we don't recognize it. We have this relationship with God, and he's so important to us, and we, we don't recognize what he's trying to teach us. We don't know how he wants to use us. You know, it's this whole thing that, that God, you're so important to me, and I love you, and God, I want to be everything you want me to be, but then we can't recognize what God's working on, what God's trying to do. Go your way, sell whatever you have and give it to the poor. And you will have treasure in heaven. Sometimes I don't know if the Lord really wanted him to do all that. I think the Lord just wanted him to be willing to do all that, you know. There's stories where the Lord stopped something just to see if they were willing, right? So, uh, you, listen, your wealth is more important than your relationship with God. What you got? So why don't you go sell all that? And you'll have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow me. And I think we could all, we probably could all do this. And Jesus said to me, or Jesus said to you, the one thing you lack... And then fill in that blank, right? And are you, willing to, are you willing to make a change in your life so you're not lacking that anymore and pick up a cross? Follow me. Because in other places, we're commanded to pick up a cross and follow him, right? And I, I, somebody drew me a picture. I preached one time this idea of, of we'll carry that cross all the way to the gates of heaven, you know? And we'll take that cross off as soon as we walk in those pearly gates. And there'll be this big pile of crosses outside the pearly gates, you know, where we carried our cross all the way to heaven, you know? And, and somebody drew me a picture of heaven's gates, you know, and, and a big pile of crosses out. And they just drew that for me. And it reminds me that my job is to pick up a cross and follow Jesus. And, and it's got to be more important than any other thing I have. Nobody's going to pick up a cross if they got these other things that are so important. Right? That's the fight we have. Well, you know, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays I can pick up a cross. My wife said recently she saw a man going through Springfield carrying a cross. I think it's one of those guys that go all the way across the country. Now that dude takes the verse literally, man. That dude... Uh, some place the Lord said, take, take up a cross and follow. So, man, he just put a wheel on the bottom of the cross and started going east to west, right? I'm not sure that's what God's calling us all to do. But he, there's something in this verse that says there's something standing in the way of you picking up a cross. He's trying to say, I should, I'm not trying to skip a spot there, but if you'll do what I command you to do, there'll be... A reward for that in heaven that's greater than everything you give up. I don't want to skip over that part. Now pick up your cross, follow me. Right? Come on. That's right, isn't it? I mean, are we Christians? Are we Christians? Who's our example? Jesus is our example. What did Jesus do? He picked up a cross and followed God right up on the top of the hill, right? I hate to tell you that that's... A tough thing to do. Carrying a cross is not a hard, uh, not an easy thing to do. It's a hard thing to do. I happen to think that God made you perfectly for the cross you're supposed to carry, and the most fulfillment you'll ever have in your whole life, the most energy you'll ever have, is in what you do. I feel like this is this is a cross. What I'm doing right now. I told you guys earlier. Man, the songs are over. I like the songs so much. Now I got to go to work. I just like the music. I like singing the music. You know, it, for me, for me, it's, oh, God, I love that music. It's so, the one that will never fail, right? You will never fail. And when Bev says amen, it's like, oh, gosh. Now your eyes on me. You know what I mean? Now everybody measures every word I say, you know. Now I got to be careful that I'm not, don't prove that I'm an idiot on the stage. But Lord, I'll follow you. 
It helped me. I, I just, you know the story of my life. I, first time I was in Peru, the Lord said, you're going to work here the rest of your life. I came home saying to my wife, honey, we're going to work in Peru. Let's sell everything we got. And we went through the process of trying to figure out how we could just downsize and go to Peru and live. It turned out to be my daughter's calling. But we had already in our heads went through this process of if, if that's what it costs, we'll lay it all down. We sold houses and lands to invest in an old church building because no bank would loan on the building. The Lord will test that, right? And I'm not saying it's money related. It could be time related. It could be, I don't know, attitude related. And pick up that darn cross and follow me, right? Everything you give up, you'll get much more in heaven. You, you'll never lack anything forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You know, it's like the record is getting ever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Never and ever. It's like the record it skips, you know. For you guys in the balcony, a record is a vinyl thing. You used to put a needle on a vinyl thing. And every now and then, first car I had, hey, listen up, guys. First car I had had an 8-track player in it. And I was really excited when you could get a cassette player that would go in the 8-track player in your car, right? Because we went from 8-tracks to cassettes, right? And you could plug this thing in your 8-track in your car and put a cassette in it. And we thought cassettes were the greatest thing ever. You could play one song on one side, hey, flip it over and have a totally different song on the other side. And you'd play right back to the beginning of the song you liked on the other side, so you could just keep flipping this cassette. Now, this is, I, let, me, let me just get real heavy. The Laodicean church, the church age that we live in right now, is wealthy. So what comes with wealthy? The same struggle that this man's in. Right? So he has an opportunity. Just, just think about this for a minute. He's looking at Jesus face to face. And Jesus was calling a 13th disciple. Right? Same thing he said to the guys with the fishing nets, Right? Uh, hey, throw those nets down and follow me. They were smart enough to throw their darn nets down and follow him, right? Hey, go do all this thing and pick up a... Come on and follow me. That man could have been listed as one of the 13. But the Lord's speaking the same thing to us. And this is crazy. And you're called to be one of those disciples too, Right? A disciple, a disciple is just a follower of Jesus. Right? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you got the hiccups? Boo! 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 <laughs> we're going to have a staring contest there for a second, were we? You got the hiccups. She got the hiccups. But he was sad at this word and went away sorrowful for he had great possessions. I, I tried to find the saddest. Where's he going? He going after more stuff? What, what's, what's better than the offer he got from the Lord? He's walking away from everything. He's making a decision about the, the, the trade-offs, you know, what this world has to offer versus what God's calling him to. For great was his possession. I... I don't know if I ever want to get there, right? Lord, don't ever let me have enough that I get my eyes on my stuff and, and not on you, right? I don't want that. I don't want it. 
any time in my life, any time I've ever accumulated something I thought was valuable. I had this story where, you know, over the years, I was raised by a builder, and, and I'd always thought, Lord, someday I'm going to build this amazing house for my wife. And I would, every place I'd go, I'd buy these windows that i get discounted. Somebody ordered the wrong ones or these fancy doors or whatever, you know, and, and I had these, I had this barn, this corn crib. I just had it full of windows and doors, white vinyl. I'm going to build some kind of house someday, and I'm just stacking the windows in there, man. I'm just, every time I got a chance to buy a discounted window, I'd buy it, put it in the, put it in the barn, put it in the barn. And I'd just think over the years, you know, man, I'm going to have, this window could go here. And A man in our church has a fire in his house. And I said, hey, how can I help? I'm up in Rosewood, how can I help you? He said, uh, we think we can save everything, but but our windows are all shot. He says, you don't make any windows. <laughs> I wanted so bad to say no. I, I, I said, I got some windows. Why don't you come over? He said, you do? Yeah, why don't you come up? Bring a trailer, come over. Oh, my gosh. That guy doesn't know. I said, hey. I prayed before I went, God, just let him meet a couple. He goes in there and starts picking... This window, he has, he wrote down all the dimensions. This window will fit here, and this window will fit here, and this one. And I, you know what? I was thinking about cutting this wall out and putting another. He's putting windows in where there ain't even windows. <laughs> and we need this new door, and we need this. And he just keeps. He said, "Is this okay?" <laughs> yeah, it's okay. And he loads that trailer down, man. He goes, the tires are flat, leaving my house, you know what I mean? And I'm looking in my shed going, years of collecting. It was inventory for this other guy. He came back at some point. What, what killed me was he came back and said, Mark, those windows were amazing. And then one, six months later he said, Mark, I hate to tell you this. We got the house all fixed up. There's an opportunity for me in Florida. I'm going to move to Florida. To bring me back my windows. <laughs> I, I don't know. You know the rest of that story? Here's the rest of that story. We bought an old barn. And I, 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 I had these big window openings. Uh, a whole bunch of them, like 70 window openings, all the same size. I'm like, oh, God. All those windows I saved wouldn't work here. We were modeling this barn into a house. One day, Richard Anderson, you know, Richard, Carly Anderson's husband, said, Mark, we're over in Columbus. They're throwing these windows out. We're remodeling a restaurant. There's like 70 some of them. They're all the same exact size. They're 28 inches by 44 inches or something. I take a measuring tape, I'm on the phone. 28 inches, 44 inches. He said, there's like 70 of them. Do you want them? We're going to throw them in the dumpster. Do you want them? Do you have something? Yeah, I want them. That night, he comes in with a, two big trailer loads of windows that fit in my barn. 70 someone. They were argon gas filled. The best. Probably bought me, brought me at the time, probably seven, 70 plus windows that were $400 or more a piece. Here's what I did. This is what I did. On every window opening, I had a big hammer. I went, boom! <laughs> boom! The windows were slightly bigger. I hit them twice with a hammer. The windows went right in. 70-some <laughs> windows. Jehovah Jireh. We're going to see it if I can get there. Preach it up. Not, nobody gives up houses and lands and brothers and sisters and mothers and, and not receive a hundredfold in this life and in the life to come. That's what it says. Anybody need any windows? <laughs> and he went away sorrowful. He, he could have sold all his stuff. Hey. And the Lord had gave it back to him in this life and in the life to come. 
right? And Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answered and said to them, children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? You know what happens? Start trusting in your, in your what? In your stuff. We had a lady in our church years ago who was the, the maid for the richest man in Ohio. At times, we got to go over the richest. You guys have been over there, right? Wanda was her name. And, and we'd go over there. That dude had cars in his garage that were like he never drove, but they were. He had somebody hired just to dust his cars. He, over that garage, he had a, a house built over a garage, fancy, over in Dublin, fancy, 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 for a nurse to live because he knew he was getting older and he wanted a nurse right there to care for his everything. So he hired like a nurse practitioner person to be his own private nurse. And he lived for that. And you know what's going to happen? What was it? The wealthy man died and Lazarus, who would eat the crumbs off the, you know, the wealthy man died and went to hell. Those the verse that's hardest, some of the hardest verses there. And Lazarus went to Abraham's bosom. And across that great gulf, the man in hell says, send him here to put his finger in a t touch of water and put it on my tongue. You know what, you know what the odds are, what the, what the price is for gaining wealth and losing God? But we live in that time, we live in that culture. Right? In fact, I don't know this about people rushing across our border because there's wealth here, there's freebies here, there's health care here. You know what I mean? Because they trust in what the world has to offer more than they trust in what God has for them in their own country. Right? Hey, you straighten up. You straighten up. You let go of your mother's mouth and you sit down. <laughs> now you're ignoring me. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Why? Because you trust in your riches. Isn't it awful to be that blind? You can't see beyond your own stuff. Right? Got to keep going here. Oh, I do too. They were greatly astonished among themselves. Who can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, with, with men it's impossible, but with God, uh, but not with God, for with God all things are possible. And Peter began to say to him, see, we've left all to follow you. You understand all that? That guy kept his wealth. We threw our nets down. And Jesus answered and said, As surely I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. What's this? Who shall not receive hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. So there's a price for all that. And in the age to come, eternal life. I think I, I, I just did the math here. I just tried to say, you give <laughs> up one thing, you get a hundred things in this life and a hundred things in the life to come. If you believe God's word, you believe God's word? Look at that math. Did the rich young ruler do good with his choice? Are you doing good with your choice? Are you willing to give up? 
I mean, look, look at that. You talk about investment, you talk about a pyramid scam, scheme. Look at that. You give up one, you get two, 200. You, you all get that? Is that? But many who are first will be last, and the last first. I'll give you a little tip. Can I give you a tip? A pastor's knowledge of church picnics, right? You can go over there and stand in that chicken line if you want to for a long time. And get there and the chicken's been picked through and somebody's already ate your salad and the whole thing. Or you can go straight to the dessert table <laughs> where there is no line, right? So on picnic days, if you just become last do the last first, it's, it's rewarding. I've been trying to teach that for years. Go straight for the cookies, man. And the kid. You can, if you're the guy that gets to cut the cake, you can take it right out of the middle. You know what I mean? I kid. But you understand this whole thing, right? You don't want to be first in this world. You'd be last. audio drill and sing that song you know in in Christ in the kingdom of God only losers get the crown it's okay to lose it's okay really I'm serious it's okay to if you suffer persecution that's okay if this world doesn't feel like home that's okay if things are struggles and you what stuff on television didn't that Olympic thing just drive you nuts? I've always kind of enjoyed watching the Olympics start up, you know, and the, the dude fire the arrow over the thing and just like, whoa! All the weird light stuff they do and the whole thing. And What somebody say today? Americans' leaders have stopped listening to God. Hey, and now you have a leader that can't even can't even talk. You wanted a leader to give you everything, and you're going to end up with nothing. Now, there were on the road going up to Jerusalem. See, if you go look that up, it's kind of cool. I'm just telling you. It shocked me. I've never done that before. The terrain is unbelievably rugged and awful, and I wouldn't want to do it. Right? I mean, it's Grand Canyon-ish like terrain. I'm, you can't believe it until you see it. Uh, modern day, that road. And Jesus was going before them, and they were amazed. And as they followed, they were afraid. And he took the twelve aside and began to tell them the things that should happen to him. What were they afraid? Because they knew Jesus was in trouble. They knew they were going to Jerusalem. I think at one point, Thomas or somebody, he says, let's go to Jerusalem. Thomas says, so we can die there? Why are we? No, Jesus, let's just go to a cave someplace. Let's just hang out. Let's find a campsite. What's your number, new number, Dodie? 501. 501. What, in, in, what, what? I was trying to think of the camp's ground. Uh, farmers, poor farmers. Hey, Jesus, spot 501. Somebody's moving out of the best lot. Let's just move over to the best lot, Lord. Let's just, why do we need to go to Jerusalem? Come on. He took the world aside and began to tell them that things would happen. Now, I think I have a slide up here. Yeah. And this is interesting in the Gospels. We don't see this anyplace else. There are other places where Jesus predicts his death. But in Mark, he predicts it in chapter 8. Predicts his death. Chapter 9. In chapter 10. 
And he says these details. Behold, we're going up to Jerusalem. The Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. This is before, two weeks before or so. How do they forget that? Right? Mark records it, Peter remembers it, and Mark records it in this gospel. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And on the third day he will rise again. You know, after they see Jesus risen, they, they say, Oh, now we remember what he said. Now. It's even crazy when the women run back and say, He's alive! They say, No. Tells them three chapters in a row. That encouraged them, I'm sure, right? Do you really want to know what's ahead? Do you really do you want to know? No? And they came to Jericho, and when they went out of Jericho, his disciples and a great multitude. Uh, and a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of that guy, Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I went today, I thought the Chosen videos had that scene. But they had a scene, I don't think it's in the Bible, where he heals this lady. A blindness? They do it pretty well. This lady comes to him with blindness and he just puts his hand on her eyes and it's so... I, you know, I can read the scripture and not be emotional unless I feel the Holy Spirit on me then I start crying like a baby. And here I am sitting in front of the screen today and Jesus is... I can visually see Jesus, this poor lady, and he heals her. Every time I see that, I don't know what it is, but something goes shooting through me and it says to me again, I serve a God who heals. That that stuff is no trouble for him. I started watching everything I could watch on healing blindness today. What's the do? Jesus spits in mud. <laughs> and puts it on a guy's eyes and he says wash and the guy washes in his eyes I, to me to me this blindness thing is is not just a physical hit but it's also a spiritual thing you know the, the Lord wants you to be healed from blindness the Lord, when you can't see there's a, a two thing there you know so often we're blind to what God is doing we're bi blind to what, what God is trying to work in our life we, we don't have any spiritual sight I would venture to say to you, I, in Peru, I got to t read, and I think it's Psalms 139, how God knows the number of your days. And it says, and he wrote the purpose, basically just in Mark translation, and he wrote the purpose for every day in his book. So God already knows the number of my days and wrote the purpose for every day. So I just know this from studying that psalm that every day of my life God has written it in a book already and there were purpose in it. And I try to walk around every day thinking about God, what is the purpose in this day? You've already wrote it in a book. And I hate to get to the end of a day and say, say to myself, I got nothing, Lord. Did I, miss, did I walk right past something? Did I miss something? You know what I mean? I, that just drives me crazy. You know, sometimes later... Uh, the Lord will reveal to me, oh, it was this or that, you know. Sometimes I never know. Sometimes I feel like I missed it. And I don't put pressure on myself. I just pray in the morning, Lord, you've already written this day. I don't want to make wrong turns. This man, listen, Jesus is coming by. And he did the smartest thing he could do. What did he do? I have a problem if Jesus is coming by. I'll just be quiet. I'll just shh, 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 be very, very quiet. I'm sure the crowd was trying to say, hey, dude. 
the big guys in Jericho, don't embarrass us. Shh. Son of David, have mercy on me. If there's something God, how can you say that? Something got God's attention? Lord, just have mercy on me, Lord. You're the mercy giver. I'm a person in need, Lord. I, uh, mercy means you're giving me something I don't deserve, right? That's what mercy is. You're giving me something I don't deserve it. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I'm in a spot. I need mercy. God, you've got to do something. Where was that at? Where'd that baby go? You didn't. Oh, that's, that's. You didn't put a. What's that where you tie something in their mouth? and What? Oh, she said amen. I'm starting to like her. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. That's some pretty good words, right? Hey, 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 that's your second warning. One more, and I may have to squeeze your cheeks. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called, to be called. And they called the blind man, saying to him, be of good cheer, rise. He's calling you. <sighs> Jesus, have mercy on me. Everybody went from saying, shut up, dude, to, hey, get over here, he's calling you. I, I just, I like that verse because there's words in there. Be of good cheer. Dodie, I'm preaching at you. You hear it? Lord, have mercy on me. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Be of good cheer, rise. He's calling to you. My opinion is, Jesus knew his name. I bet in the crowd there were a lot of people making a lot of noise. Throwing aside his garments. There's everything beautiful in this. Everything beautiful. He rose and came to Jesus. Such an amazing thing. Can you see how, I, I don't want to say magic because that isn't it. Can you see what motivates Jesus can you see how this is supposed to play for you to be received by the one who loves you? There's a humility, there's a brokenness, there's a, a, a desire to move towards him. There's a desire to throw everything off. And there was some kind of recognition in this man that he was my answer. Right? That's my answer. Now, they're not in Jerusalem. They're in Jericho. This dude's sitting on a side street in Jericho. I mean, for Jesus to come that way, he connected something that this was a moment. He could be silent. I'd love to tell you a story about I can't do it, but... A conversation I had with my daughter when I was in Peru. It was something like this. It was this idea of Maggie, God opens the door for a moment. There's opportunity that comes. And if you miss it, you'll regret it for the rest of your life. And this man knew that if I don't cry out right, Jesus is going to pass by in 60 seconds, man. That's where the, the title for that movie came from, Gone in 60 Seconds. Isn't that a movie title? 60 seconds, he was coming and going, all right? And he knew there was a moment of opportunity. I, I, I love this understanding that God gives us these moments of opportunity, you know what I mean? And we can let them pass by not knowing if they'll ever come back again.
And Jesus answered and said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said, Rabbi, I, Rabbi, I, want, I may receive my sight. Then I may receive my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And immediately received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. Twenty seconds to spare. Seventeen, sixteen, fifteen. There's good stuff in that chapter. Now, can you take that stuff and apply it to you? I mean, that's what the scripture is all about, right? You taking the stuff you heard tonight, take that thought. There's probably more thoughts than than this pastor could relate there, but take that stuff and be changed by it. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I don't want to trade this world for the things I can have in you. Father, we thank you for time together. So much more, Lord. You're so much more than what I leave behind. I don't want to miss you in anything, Lord. There's things, Lord, I know you're working on in me. I want to hear, obey, and, and be changed. I don't want to remain the same. This year, next, next year at this time, Lord, I want to be even closer to you. I want to be more useful to you in the kingdom. And I know, God, whether it's big or little, I've got to make changes in me that you're desiring, Lord, to finish my faith. You began it, you'll finish it. Lord, the word has to change me. I have to be challenged by these things, Lord. I have to look at my life measured based on the mistakes, Lord, and the successes I see in the scripture and make changes related to my attitude, to my heart. I have to get control of my mind. I have to live in truth. I have to use my mouth to build, to correct myself. So that I might be everything I'm supposed to be in you. Help me, God, in all those things. Help the church, Lord, to that you might have mercy on us. That we might throw everything to the side, Lord, that we might stand before you. Thank you for time together. We bless you. Love you with all that we are. And we'll give you praise, Lord, for the rest of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Man, thanks for coming. Come back and see us. Woo. See you, Scott. Everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi. What is that? He's giving me, he's giving me that.